Good folks, I'm very pleased to be here today with Minister of Education, Adriana Lagrange, Dr. Dina Hinshaw, Alberta's Chief Medical Officer of Health, and Barry Litton, Executive Director of uh, the College of Alberta School Superintendents. We should all be very concerned about the recent rise in active COVID-19 cases and hospitalizations in Alberta. Over the past four months, Albertans have done an amazing job to limit the spread, keep each other safe, and keep our health system from being overwhelmed. Countless sacrifices have been made by people and great care for the vulnerable has been shown. But it looks like some folks are no longer observing the public health guidelines. Maybe that's because some people have just become tired of this whole thing, and we can all understand that. Or some believe that the threat of COVID-19 is exaggerated. Maybe some young, healthy people aren't worried about getting sick themselves. But whatever the reasons, the results are troubling. And so today I plead with Albertans not to give up on the progress that we've made. The last thing we want to have to do is reimpose damaging restrictions on our economy and our freedoms. COVID-19 is not over, and it likely won't be over for months to come. We've shown the world how we can limit the spread and save lives in our province through personal responsibility. So let me be blunt. If you think you can socialize with large groups of people in close quarters, knock it off. If you're young and healthy, remember you could still carry and transmit the virus that ends up killing someone who is old or vulnerable. So let's all get back to the basics. Stay home if you're sick. Try to stay a few feet away from people whenever possible. Wear a mask if that's not possible. Wash or sanitize your hands frequently. And please just follow Dr. Hinshaw's common sense guidelines. We're not expecting per perfection. Probably no one is going to follow all of these guidelines all of the time. But let's just do our best to show care for others. That's the Alberta way. Dr. Hinshaw will be providing her update on COVID-19 in a few minutes, uh, but First Minister LaGrange and I have an important announcement to make about the coming school year. The decision to close all Alberta schools back in March to contain the spread of COVID-19 uh, was announced by the government on March 15th, acting on the advice of Dr. Hinshaw and Alberta Health Services, following consultations with Alberta's school boards, parents, and other stakeholders. It was a tough decision to close classrooms and send three quarters of a million students home for what turned out to be the remainder of the school year. But it was the right decision because it helped us to get on top of the pandemic early by limiting social interaction while we got our aggressive testing program up and running, develop public awareness about the basic health precautions, got international travel controls in place at our airports and borders, and scaled up the pandemic response across our entire healthcare system, plus just learned a whole lot more about the nature of this disease. As a result, we never came close to hitting our hospital and ICU maximums, and by May 1st, we were able to start lifting public health restrictions under Phase 1 of Alberta's relaunch strategy. That included daycare centres, an essential service for many parents. Approved family day homes and private care homes were permitted to remain open throughout the pandemic, of, as particularly if they were serving the children of essential workers. And as of May 5th, as part one of uh, phase one of our relaunch, child care centres had reopened in 29 towns and cities across the province to support essential workers. A total of 183 centres were open and over 4,000 spaces were available. All licensed daycares and out-of-school care programs were allowed to open on May 14th, followed by preschools on May 28th. The protocols developed to operate all these facilities safely have been very successful in preventing outbreaks amongst children and staff. Likewise, the Calgary Catholic Separate School Division ran an in-person summer school program following provincial guidelines and have not recorded a single infection amongst either teachers or students. So that's all good news, background context, and worldwide it's estimated that 1.5 billion children were sent home from school due to COVID-19. But among the handful of countries that did not close schools, and among the dozens of places that have reopened them, the evidence is overwhelming that schools can be operated safely with little health, health risk for children and teachers, and uh, low risk of causing serious outbreaks in the communities that surround them. Elementary schools reopened, for example, in April in Denmark, followed by uh, high schools there in May, 
and nationwide infections continued to fall in that country. The same thing happened in the Netherlands. While in Finland, Belgium, and Austria, caseloads remained stable after schools reopened. For the two, uh, first two weeks after British Columbia o- uh, reopened schools on June the 1st, no school-related cases were reported, and the province finished the year with just one infected school staff member at a single school with no student infections. Science magazine reports this month that numerous studies have shown that people under the age of 18 are one-third to one-half as likely as adults to contract the virus, and the younger the child, the lower the risk. The magazine also cited a lot of evidence indicating that elementary school children especially have a low chance of transmitting the virus. Alberta's COVID numbers seem to bear this out. Only 14% of all reported infections have been amongst youth under the age of 19. And over the past five months, only eight school-aged children have been hospitalized with COVID-19, one in ICU, and most of those infected experience mild or negligible symptoms. Beyond all this very compelling health data, there is a growing recognition amongst experts and and certainly of parents of the serious negative long-term social and economic impact of keeping schools closed indefinitely. Last month, 1,500 pediatricians in the United Kingdom signed an open letter warning that continued school closures risked, and I quote, uh, scarring the life chances of a generation of young people, unquote. Concerns have been raised about some school children suffering because they are trapped in impoverished or sadly sometimes in abusive homes with no contact with staff or teachers or peers. And we're just beginning to recognize the economic costs of parents being forced to stay home in terms of lost uh, earnings, lost jobs, lower productivity, uh, higher debt, uh, and, and so many more problems. Of course, this has hit women especially hard as they often bear the greatest burden as caregivers. So having said all of that, I am very pleased to announce that following extensive consultations with school boards, superintendents, parents, and teachers, Alberta's K-12 education system will reopen for in-class teaching this September, and 750,000 students will be able to return to school. Our health and education officials have closely studied the experiences of other provinces and countries, and together they've developed state-of-the-art protocols for minimizing the risk of transmission at schools. These protocols will be reviewed regularly as new evidence emerges and changes and any changes necessary for protecting students and staff will be incorporated. So let me be clear, the situation in terms of the, the protocols may evolve over time. This does not mean there will be no cases in schools. It means rather that we have calculated the relative risks of reopening against the risks of continued closures, and we've made the best decision that to serve the public interest. Throughout the pandemic, Albertans have consistently demonstrated great responsibility, doing their part to contain the spread and protect the vulnerable. I'm confident that everyone in the school system will do their utmost to follow the comprehensive public health guidance that Alberta Health has developed for schools. This includes physical distancing, grouping students in cohorts to minimize infection spread, frequent hand washing with sanitizers at school entrances and in classrooms, staying home when sick, increased cleaning of surfaces, daily self-assessment, and students and staff may wear a mask if they choose to do so. We're determined to do everything we can to safely return students to class and will continue to adjust safety protocols, as I've said, as needed on the advice of Dr. Hinshaw, taking into, the, uh, into account the experience of other jurisdictions. This decision is ultimately about doing what's best for students and parents. They, along with our teachers, worked very hard during the last third of the school year to try to keep up with students' coursework. I've heard many heartwarming stories from parents about the joys of spending so much time at home with their kids over the last few months, including the joys and challenges of schooling at home. But everybody acknowledges that it's also been a struggle to balance taking care of their school-aged children and keeping up with their schoolwork while working from home on their full-time jobs. And the vast majority agree it's time to get back to normal, or as normal as we can, and to get kids back to school. 
In fact, a survey of more than 65,000 parents done by the Alberta School Councils Association found that 86% of parents supported a return to school plan for this fall. Minister LaGrange and Dr. Hinshaw will speak to the details, and I'll just conclude by noting that uh, by making this announcement now, we're giving families plenty of time to plan for the fall and prepare for back to school. The bottom line is that young people, especially children, are at low risk of infection and very low risk of severe health outcomes from COVID-19. It's the elderly and those with underlying health vulnerabilities who are by far at highest risk. Children need us to look out for their future, which really is the future of Alberta. And that mean, that means we must get them back in school and back on track to get the education and the support that they need to succeed in life. With that, I'll now turn it over to Minister LaGrange, who will share some more details about what September will look like and will highlight some of the supports that have already been put in place uh, for our schools, teachers, and students. Thank you, Premier, and good afternoon, everyone. As Premier Kenny announced, I am pleased that our students will be returning to classrooms this fall under scenario one of our school reentry plan. I know that many parents and children will be happy to go back to a near normal school routine, and this was evident, as the Premier has indicated, in the Alberta School Councils Association survey, where 86% of respondents said they want their children back in school. I want to thank everyone in our education system, school boards, superintendents, teachers, staff and parents for all of their feedback on the reentry plan and, all, and for all of their hard work for the upcoming school year. Come September, our school days will look mostly the same as before COVID-19, but with some modifications. On that front, Alberta Health has provided thorough guidance for Scenario 1. It covers a wide array of details, big and small, and offers suggested alternatives. This includes placing hand sanitizers at the entrances of our schools and in our classrooms, the frequent cleaning of surfaces, grouping students in cohorts, and planning the school day to allow for physical distancing. For a specific class example, such as in music classes, playing string instruments is preferred over wind instruments, and each school will have its own plan to allow for physical distancing whenever possible. The new normal COVID-19 environment requires all of us to make some adjustments to minimize the risk of transmission, and everyone will have a role to play so students and staff can stay safe in our schools. I know Dr. Hinshaw will have more to say on public health guidances shortly. I want to stress that we are determined to do everything that we can possibly do to safely return students to class. However, we will continue to adjust protocols as required on the advice of our Chief Medical Officer of Health and in consultation with the education system. We are confident that our plan will work. In fact, we are able to somewhat trial test it this summer when school authorities ran in-person summer school programming. School authorities such as Chinook's Edge, Calgary Catholic, Medicine Hat Public, and Progressive Academy have all run in-person summer school programming under the guidelines and have had no major issues. This is great news, and I am pleased to see that our plan is working. To help parents prepare for what to expect in the new school year, we have also created a return to school toolkit. It includes videos, a parent guide, and other pertinent information. Parents and schools can find the toolkit on alberta.ca forward slash return to school. I encourage parents to take the time to talk to their children about what school will look like in the fall and to watch the informative videos with them. I'm also glad to share with you today some of the additional steps our government and the education system have taken to support a safe return to school. For example, 
We've recently announced $250 million in additional accelerated capital school funding available to school boards. Some school boards chose to use about $15 million of that new funding to complete projects that will help support a COVID-19 learning environment. The upgrades include hands-free sinks, touchless soap and towel dispensers, and automatic doors, just to name a few. To give you an example of one of the projects the Edmonton Catholic School Division is utilizing, they are replacing water fountains with water bottle filling stations in all of their schools to pr protect their students from COVID-19. School authorities have also been receiving full funding allotments since July, since July 1st. And every school authority in Alberta is receiving a funding increase for the upcoming school year. I've also approved the use of school board reserves, if needed, to help cover local COVID-19 related costs. Currently, we have approximately $363 million sitting in school board reserves across our province. Another change we've made in our government will now, is that our government will now offer diploma exams in every subject in the November and April exam rounds, in addition to the January and June examinations. This is in response to a uh, from <clears throat> pardon me. This is in re response to a request from school boards, who are shifting um, high school programming to a four semester system as part of their COVID nineteen reentry plan. Students in participating schools will take fewer subjects in each semester so that they can be grouped in cohorts to minimize contact and make contact tracing easier. School boards in the capital region are among those favoring this particular approach. We are glad to be able to support their plan and we will continue to respond to the needs of schools and students as we prepare for the upcoming school year. Now, I know some parents may be worried about what happens in case an outbreak occurs in a school. If a student or a staff tests positive for COVID-19, a public health team will investigate to determine when symptoms developed and will support the school to minimize the transmission. Parents will be notified if a case of COVID-19 is confirmed in their school and public health officials will contact those who were in close contact with that person. I'm sure Dr. Hinshaw will have more to say on this very shortly. Additionally, if there is an outbreak of COVID-19 in a community or school, health officials will work with those school authorities and Alberta Education to make a decision to transition to partial in-class learning or at-home learning. Decisions will be based on multiple factors, including the number of cases in a community or school and the risk of ongoing transmission. And it will be made by our government. I want to thank everyone in our education system for helping us develop this comprehensive plan. And I want to again emphasize that we are determined to do everything we can to safely return students to class. We will continue to work with our Chief Medical Officer of Health and our education system, and if necessary, we'll adjust protocols as required based on Dr. Hinshaw's advice. I will now turn it over to Barry Latoon, Executive Director of the College of Alberta School Superintendents for some brief remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. The College of Alberta School Superintendents Board of Directors is confident that the safety and well-being of students and staff will continue to be the first priority, therefore supports the government's decision to resume in-school classes under near-normal conditions. The CAS Board of Directors also believes that this decision supports the views of a vast majority of parents who have responded to surveys that many of the school authorities have conducted over the last few months. Based on the guidelines and risk mitigation strategies identified by the government and its Chief Medical Officer of Health, along with the commitment from Alberta Health Services to work directly with school, authority, school authorities in maintaining the health of their communities, the CAS Board of Directors believes that the safety of students and staff will be maintained and that in-class learning is in the best interest of all students. A key to the success 
of in-school classes will be the cooperation of school staff and families to diligently screen for any symptoms associated with COVID-19 and to stay at home if ill. Superintendents will be working with the ministry to release the uh, recommended screening protocols and detailed re-entry plans before school starts and will have regular updates for parents, staff and students as the school year continues. Given the evolving nature of the pandemic, each division's re-entry plan will not look the same and may require adjustments over time. However, superintendents and their leadership teams have worked diligently with their boards, their staff, and their uh, health officials in their uh, local communities to ensure that they are prepared and will be prepared should circumstances change as they move to and, and force them to move to a blended or an at-home learning program. The collaboration that has taken place between school divisions and education partners exemplifies the power of working together and demonstrates that we are in this together. Numerous school divisions have shared their re-entry plans, safety courses, and learning plans for other school authorities to draw from. In the early stages of the pandemic, a group of CAST members worked with the Alberta Teachers Association to develop protocols for working at home. The teamwork has been exemplary and is being undertaken in the interest of students and staff. CAS commends the ministry's leadership in providing guidelines based on research and evidence and to allow the safe, uh, to allow the safe re-entry to school and appreciates the ministry's trust in school boards and superintendents to use their judgment and understanding of local circumstances to determine how best to meet the guidelines in their respective communities. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Latoon, Minister and Premier, and good afternoon, everyone. I would like to start today by providing further details on some of the health measures that will be in place as children return to school this fall. The most common question that students, parents and staff have right now is probably, how will we keep schools safe? As a parent of young children, I know this is top of mind for all of us who have direct connection with the school system. I want to stress that there is no risk-free approach to living with COVID-19, yet we still have to learn to live with it. There are no easy choices in front of us. We know, as you've heard, that extended school closures negatively impact children's overall long-term mental, emotional, and physical health. As has been outlined, current evidence indicates that school-aged children typically have very mild disease and young children do not seem to transmit to others as often as adults. Despite this, COVID-19 still needs to be taken seriously for the health of all those in the school and others, such as the families of school children. We will almost certainly identify cases of COVID-19 in students and staff in the fall. Because of this, we are putting measures in place to protect the health of children, staff and families by limiting onward spread within the school. As Minister LaGrange noted, there is a re-entry toolkit designed to prepare parents and students for what to expect in the new school year. Under our current guidance, things will look a bit different when students and staff return in the fall. Several public health measures will be put in place to protect everyone in class and to protect their families and cohorts outside of school. The new measures will require students and staff to monitor symptoms on a daily basis and stay home if they are feeling sick. Students must wash or sanitize their hands before and after entering school and classrooms. Surfaces at schools and on buses will be disinfected more often. Students and staff may choose to wear a mask and should be supported in choices to do so. We recognize how difficult masking would be for many students, especially at the lower elementary grades, which is why we are not relying on any single public health measure to stop the spread of COVID-19 in the school setting. Other practices such as physical distancing, cohorting, frequent hand washing, enhanced cleaning and a number of changes as to how classes and schools operate will also help. Keeping students in cohorts will help reduce the risk of widespread transmission by limiting contact and potential exposure to a small group rather than the entire school. 
Everyone in the school community will have to do their part and follow public health guidance to keep each other safe. This means that parents, students, and staff will be required to complete a daily self-screening prior to ent entering school each day. If a student shows symptoms while at school, they will be separated from others and parents or guardians will be asked to pick them up immediately. If there is a case of COVID-19 in a school or school community, health officials will work with school authorities to ensure follow-up testing is conducted as needed and all other measures are put in place to limit the spread, including quarantine of those who were in close contact with that case. Jurisdictions around the world are trying to determine the most effective ways to resume schools. We continue to watch their experiences closely. In the days ahead, we will continue to refine our public health advice for schools based on best available evidence to minimize the risks of staff and children being exposed. This is part of living in the new normal of COVID-19. We must be agile, adaptive, and guided by the evidence as it emerges. This is the best way to protect the health, safety, and well-being of students, staff, families, and communities. That brings me to today's update. I am pleased to report that 8,363 Albertans have now recovered from COVID-19. We've conducted more than 7,813 new tests, and unfortunately, we have identified 141 additional new cases in the province. Currently, 93 people are in hospital, 16 of whom are in intensive care. Two more Albertans have died, bringing the death toll to 172. As always, when we have additional deaths to report, this reminds us of the seriousness of this illness. I would like to extend my condolences to the family and friends of these two individuals and all those who have lost loved ones during this time. I am concerned by the continued rise in active cases. Our health system is watching the situation closely, but I want to be clear, we all have a role to play in reducing the rise in cases that we are seeing. If you have a child, a grandchild, a relative, or a friend in school this fall, think of them as you make decisions about your activities now. We need everyone's help in limiting the spread of this virus. The best way to have safe and healthy schools this fall is to start the school year with a low count of cases in the population. If you have a parent, grandparent, or relative who is older or has a chronic medical condition and at risk of severe outcomes, we need your help too. To protect those at risk of severe outcomes and to slow the recent rise in cases, we all need to do our part. We heard from Albertans a few months ago that they didn't need formal restrictions to be able to make the right choice to protect each other. Now is the time to show each other that that is correct. Now is the time to recognize that COVID cases and hospitalizations can rise quickly unless we all take actions every day to stop the spread. COVID-19 isn't going anywhere. It's on all of us to adopt the public health guidance and protect each other. This weekend, Beaches around the province showed us that this is possible. Two weeks ago, we had widespread reports of overcrowding, inadequate physical distancing, and general disregard for public health measures in place. Last weekend, we saw clear improvements. Thanks to coordinated efforts by beach communities like Sylvan Lake, Chestermere and Alberta Beach, as well as health officials and law enforcement, but most of all thanks to the commitment of Albertans, we had very few reports of issues at beaches across the province last weekend. The future is up to us, and we can change it. Just like we work together to address the specific issue of beach overcrowding, we can address other issues, limit the spread of the virus, lower our daily case numbers, and ensure a safe school year. We are all in this together. Thank you, and we'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Before we begin the Q&A, I'd like to ask the media on the line to please let us know who you're directing your question to. Operator, can you please put through the first caller? First is Lucy Edwardson with CBC. Go ahead, Lucy. 
Hello. This question is for Dr. Hinshaw and the minister, please. Um, I'm wondering, just given, um, as we have mentioned numerous times, this increase in cases that we've seen uh, the last four days, um, why make this announcement now? Everyone was sort of expecting it at the beginning of August, and obviously this is a little bit before that. So why make the announcement now? Why not wait and see if the cases uh, go down a little bit? I'll just say that it's really important to know that while we are seeing that rise in cases, uh, that doesn't presuppose what we will see over the next month. And as I said, uh, with the ability of Albertans to pull together and follow public health guidance, uh, these numbers don't necessarily mean that we need to have continued increases in cases. And I'll turn it over to Minister LaGrange for additional comments. Thank you. Um, the reason we're announcing right now is that we've heard very clearly from parents and from the system that they want clarity as soon as possible uh, as to what scenario we will be in. And this allows parents to make their plans for the upcoming school year, as well as the system as a whole to, to continue the plans that we're, we're making uh, to safely re-enter, um, have our children come back to the school year. So again, it's to provide clarity, clarity to the system. We said we'd uh, make the announcement by August August 1st, we are, um, we're actually ahead of schedule because we want everyone to know what we are doing and how we're going back. Thank you. Operator, can you please put through the next caller? Next is Janet French with CBC. Go ahead, Janet. Hi there. Thanks for taking my question. Um, I'm just curious why, um, I guess this is for the Premier and for um, Minister LaGrange, because I think you both brought this up in question period or in the House. Why make the comparison with summer school when the standards for summer school have been different than the operational recommendations for uh, scenario one? So I believe there's a limit of 15 people in a classroom in summer school. Is it really fair to use that as your litmus test for whether this will be successful? Well, the summer school programs, um, while they've been in scenario two, does provide us the opportunity to, to look at our guidelines to see if they actually work. And we are uh, very pleased to see that they are working, that uh, there have been no transmissions, that uh, there have been no cases. And so it, it has been a, a small lit litmus test that uh, we can go back to school uh, effectively. Um, I know that um, Barry Latoon, who's the superintendent, he's been in constant constant contact with the superintendents ac across the province, as has my department, and we're hearing very, very positive uh, feedback on our guidelines, and we're continuing to refine those guidelines as we move forward. I'll maybe just add to that uh, that I cited a number of other jurisdictions, not just Alberta summer schools, but the experience with uh, European countries and other jurisdictions. Uh, including British Columbia, for example, um, with the classrooms operating uh, during the COVID pandemic and doing so safely. So uh, we're confident that there are a, a lot of uh, many different approaches that have been taken, but uh, the key learning is that uh, schools can safely operate uh, in this environment. Operator, can you please put through the next caller? Next is Kevin Nimick with Bloomberg. Go ahead, Kevin. Hello, I'm actually with CTV Calgary. Uh, I have a question for the Premier. I actually have three, so I'm just going to say them back to back to back, and hopefully you can answer them. The first one, Premier, when you were giving your speech, you provided uh, information from a lot of studies and articles from previous weeks and months, but just came out yesterday in the Emerging, Emerging Infectious Disease Journal, uh, a, a study from South Korea that found that teens and tweens are the fastest COVID-19 spreaders. So are you using that information? Are you using the most recent science available to make these decisions around schools? Second question, we're already hearing from parents who say that they won't send their kids to school in the fall because they don't think it's safe. So is there anything you're willing to do to force them to send their kids? Is there any sort of uh, a, a policing aspect of this? And then finally, is there a class size limit? Sure. So thank you very much. First of all, um, as I just said, we've seen schools operating safely in many jurisdictions around the world, uh, including in some of the Asian countries, which um, have had amongst the world's lowest levels of infection, uh, and they've been able to operate their schools uh, per normal uh, throughout uh, the pandemic environment. So 
Uh, we think the practical experience, both here in Canada and around the world, uh, reinforces our confidence that the schools can function uh, safely during the COVID-19 uh, period. On the second point, no, we're not going to force anybody to take the, send their kids to school. I mean, obviously there's uh, truancy laws, but that's uh, our, our expectation would be that parents who choose not to send their kids into the classroom, we would respect those, that choice. And um, would uh, I, Minister LaGrange can comment further on how uh, their choice can be facilitated. I, I should point out, of course, that Alberta has the most generous rules for and support of homeschooling uh, of any province in Canada. Uh, and so, uh, and there's also blended systems where parents can come together in uh, small groups to provide supplementary support for children who are being homeschooled. So there's a lot of different choices out there. And uh, frankly, we do expect um, that the homeschooling experience of the last three or four months uh, may have uh, been a very positive one for some families and they want to continue with that. So that's absolutely their choice in Alberta. It always has been and it will be uh, in the future. Um, and uh, so uh, any of the other questions, I, I, I'll refer to Minister LaGrange. Yes, as the Premier said, we would not be, uh, we would absolutely respect uh, a parent's choice. We would not be requiring parents to send their children to school if they don't feel comfortable with the situation. That being said, I hope they have a, a close look at our guidelines. Um, we have developed them in close consultation with uh, um, Dr. Hinshaw and Alberta Health and all of the education partners, and we feel confident. We have a great plan in place to welcome our students back safely. Uh, that being said, if, if parents still don't feel comfortable, then they need to reach out to their school divisions, um, their local schools, and have the conversation as to how we can facilitate, uh, how they can facilitate the education for their students. Um, there is many options, as the Premier indicated, and I would add there's an additional uh, distance learning option as well. Um, but um, we, we absolutely respect the decisions of parents. Operator, can you please put through the next caller? Yes, uh, next sorry, is... excuse me. Can I follow up my question? Sorry, sorry Kevin, Jordan we Lamont. don't have time for follow-ups. Operator, can you please put through the next caller? Yes, next is Julia Wong with Global News. Go ahead, Julia. Hi, this question is for Dr. Hinshaw. If new case numbers continue to remain high and if the number of contacts for each new case continues to be between 15 and 20 in some cases, how quickly could cases overwhelm the province and impact hospital and ICU capacity? And is there a need to make cohorts or social bubbles smaller? What we have seen in other jurisdictions, we are watching very closely the experience in the United States and other jurisdictions that are seeing rapid rise. Uh, and what we're seeing is that if you cross a certain threshold, we know that uh, approximately half of our currently active cases that we don't know what the source is, which means that there's likely more cases that aren't diagnosed. Uh, and so the actual number is likely greater than, than what we know about. And as you've said, our, our average number of contacts per case has gone up. And we know that it is possible that new cases could uh, spike in a, in a very rapid way once it sort of reaches that tipping point where you have enough new cases with enough contacts. Uh, again, I don't think we've crossed that tipping point. The number of new cases is concerning. Uh, we are doing everything we can with respect to closing the gap in rapid contact tracing, rapid notification of new cases, making sure that uh, our messaging is very clear, looking at how we can enhance our messaging to those who are in that highest uh, highest number age group of the 20 to 39 year olds and so there there are many things that we're doing right now but uh, absolutely it is a concern that if cases continue to spread uh, and if we don't all work together that uh, they could continue to rise as we've seen in other places like the United States. I will reiterate though that what we saw over the last week with respect to partnerships with, with municipalities causing a, a significant improvement in our ability to manage the public health measures in those specific situations of beaches is a really positive story. And I think it highlights how every business owner, every municipality, every person who's responsible for a gathering, it's in all of our hands together to make sure that those guidance documents are incorporated in our activity planning and that each one of us as individuals steps up to take on that responsibility of protecting each other. So all is, is not lost. We have the opportunity together 
Again, I am concerned, and I also believe that we can turn this tide, and we can do it with all of us pitching in. Operator, can you please put through the next caller? Yes, next is Sammy Hudes with Post Media. Go ahead, Sammy. Hi there. My questions for the Minister and the Premier. Um, the ATA has said it's concerned about whether um, it's actually going to be possible to maintain required distance between students and classes, especially in younger grades. Um, they're concerned about things like additional cleaning and, and who will handle that, as well as uh, uh, classes with at least 30 students or more, how the, how the distancing will take place uh, in those scenarios. So what additional supports are going to be given to teachers, and, and how will this be done effectively? So thank you for the question. Um, we are uh, continuing to refine our, our, our processes as, as we move forward. Uh, we, as I said, have a very strong uh, plan in place. While the province has provided the, the larger guidance and, and if I could say the, the broad strokes, the school divisions are continuing to refine the fine strokes. Uh, we've provided them the resources and the guidance uh, to move forward. And I'm going to actually invite uh, Barry Latoon up so he can explain some of those pieces and how school divisions, how it will look practically on the ground for, for children and for teachers. Thank you, Minister. Um, just uh, some examples that I can share. Uh, many or most school authorities are looking at bringing in uh, or, or hiring uh, extra custodians uh, to have at the school during the day in order to be able to um, wipe down some of the high touch areas. Uh, it was mentioned earlier about some school divisions are using some of the fundings to look at changing water fountains to water bottle filling. I know that uh, school authorities are doing some things that are very similar to what is happening in our general community. Uh, they're looking at perhaps identifying some of the doors into and out of the school as enter only and exit only. There's uh, signs on the floor way, on the floors uh, looking at uh, at the high school level, for example, they're looking at staggering some of the uh, class change times so that you don't have all of the students in the hallway at the same time. Um, there is uh, an ability, I think, um, I've heard of one school, a uh, bigger, larger high school that is looking at actually identifying zones within the school so that you would have students from one grade uh, being asked to stay within their zone. And so again, these are measures that are being taken. I think the key is that the Guidelines allow the local school authorities to study their own circumstance and make decisions that are in the best, uh, that work best for their schools and their school communities. Operator, can you please put through the next caller? Next is Bob Weber with the Canadian Press. Go ahead, Bob. Hello, excuse me, this is for the either uh, Mr. Latoon or perhaps the Minister. I'd like to re-ask a question that was asked earlier and not answered. Will there be limits on class sizes? In scenario one, we do not have limits on class sizes, but uh, again, we will be looking at all of the um, the guidance that we've received um, for school reentry, where uh, teachers can look at the way they place their desks. Uh, again, with 740,000 students across this province, it will look different in every school division uh, right across this province. So we have provided the overall guidance, and it's quite detailed in terms of, of, of areas that they can look at uh, to enhance um, social distancing, how to co cohort students, etc. But those final details and those fine details are left to the school divisions um, to, to implement because they are in the best position to, to know what their realities are and how they can adjust to um, their, their own scenarios. Okay, we have time for three more. Operator, can you please put through the next caller? Yes, next is... Michael King with Global News. Go ahead, Michael. Hi there. For Dr. Hinshaw and probably the minister as well, uh, we're talking about sanitization. We're talking about hand washing and physical distancing. These have all been talked about for the last uh, couple months since we started this pandemic, and we're seeing another rise in cases. If we're saying the same thing is going to be done in schools, how can we guarantee that we're not going to see spikes in cases in those schools? I can start. I'll start. Um, I, 
we anticipate that there will be some cases in schools. But again, we have a very strong plan in place that when there is a case that we will be able to identify it quickly, we will be able to um, contain it and, uh, and, and not spread the, uh, the COVID to other students. We will do everything we can to keep our staff and our students safe. But the whole idea is around ensuring that we've got those proper measures in place. We know that these measures work. Uh, washing your hands more frequently, cleansing the, um, the, the touch surfaces, et cetera. Those are the things that uh, we are going to stress with our students. Um, as I said, there are toolkits in place that uh, we will be asking parents to review with their students as well. Teachers are, are going to be um, informed as to how they can keep their, their classrooms uh, clean and, and ready for students so that they can learn in an appropriate environment. But I'll turn it over to uh, Dr. Hinshaw uh, to provide us those health guidelines. One of the main differences I would say between what we're seeing in the general public right now and what I would envision happening in schools is that there's a clear accountability structure within schools and it's clear who is responsible for each school, each school district. And so the guidance has that framework that can be monitored and if there are breaches of distancing or other guidelines, then there's ways to make sure that uh, again through that accountability structure that there's that accountability for uh, ensuring that those things are in place. That's different from in the general public. Often we're seeing people gathering in social settings, uh, people gathering perhaps in their own homes. And so there's quite a variety of choices that people are making in a variety of settings out in the public where we are seeing transmission happen, where there isn't that clear accountability structure in place. And I think that is one of the key differences with respect to schools and what's happening across the population is again the presence of that accountability structure and that framework. Operator, can you please put through the next caller? Next is Tanya Fober with the Rocky Mountain Outlook. Go ahead, Tanya. Hi, yes, my, I have uh, a question for Minister LaGrange, and I was hoping she could expand upon uh, two uh, things she mentioned. One, um, if a school were to move from in classes to a blended or an at-home program, who would make that decision uh, specifically within the government and how and uh, what would be go into that decision making process? And when you said every school authority in Alberta will receive funding increase in the upcoming school year, how much money can uh, school authorities expect in support for operational costs related to COVID? Thank you. So to answer your second question first, um, there is an additional $120 million in additional funding going to all school divisions across this province in the upcoming school year. As well, there was $250 million in capital maintenance and renewal stimulus funding that was added on top of that. I know that uh, $15 million of that has been allocated towards uh, COVID-related um, infrastructure within schools. I also know that there's $363 million sitting in reserves and we've allowed schools to have the ability to utilize those reserve funds to, um, to meet their needs in regards to COVID. As far as the, um, the education side of, 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 edu of the schooling, uh, if it is at home learning, if a parent feels uncomfortable, then they would go to their school division, they would talk to them and uh, see if, if they want to um, you know, continue as they are right now with um, teacher directed at home learning, but it's up to the school division to facilitate that. Um, they will need to have that conversation with the parents um, as to if is this a short term or long term? Is there um, a desire for uh, perhaps a blended program? perhaps homeschooling, those are the type of conversations that happen at the school level. This is not something that is mandated or that the government will become involved with. This is definitely at, um, at a local level. I will turn it over to Barry because he does have information on that particular piece. I can share uh, just one example that uh, I've been speaking with superintendents. So uh, within a school authority, you may have, and I'll just use one grade as an example, you may have a number of parents of grade three students 
in several schools that have indicated that there's some hesitation about having their school, their uh, children return to class. And so consideration is being given to um, cohorting that group of grade three students who might be from numerous schools and then having a staff member from the jurisdiction provide the at-home learning as there has been with the uh, current program. I think in, in, uh, in my m remarks, I think the one strength of the uh, relaunch program of the uh, plan that has been identified is that each school authority, the school board trustees and the superintendent and their leadership team have been given the authority to determine what is best in their community. And so there may well be circumstances where a school authority makes the decision to move away from the scenario one, uh, given what might be happening in their community. But again, that will be done in consultation with the ministry and also with uh, the local uh, medical officer of health. Okay, we have time for one more. Operator, can you please put through the last caller? Not Stephanie Rousseau with Radio Canada. Go ahead, Stephanie. Oui, bonjour. Ma question est pour le premier ministre. En fait, je me demandais, est-ce que la hausse des cas de COVID vous préoccupe et si ça continue d'augmenter, comme c'est le cas de, de, au cours des derniers jours, est-ce que vous envisagez de refermer certains commerces? Et puis, peut-être une deuxième question aussi, je voudrais savoir comment est-ce que vous allez vous assurer que les écoles rouvrent de manière sécuritaire quand on sait que la distanciation physique, par exemple, ça peut être sure. problématique là, dans le contexte des écoles? I'll just uh, summarize those questions in English for pe people who are following live. First question was just to, for me to comment essentially on the uh, recent rise in cases and secondly on the school uh, reopening plan. Um, tout d'abord, euh, je m'inquiète évidemment de l'augmentation des cas actifs de COVID-19 en Alberta. C'est la raison pour laquelle euh, j'encourage les Albertains à démontrer la responsabilité personnelle. Je crois que euh, nous voyons de plus en plus des cas parmi les, les Albertains plus jeunes. Et c'est vrai qu'il y a moins de risques pour leur santé personnelle, mais il faut que les jeunes comprennent qu'ils peuvent il, peut, il puisse euh, transmettre le virus aux autres plus vulnérables. C'est la raison pour laquelle je, je les encourage d'éviter les grands regroupements pour les événements socia sociaux, etc., et pour tout le monde à, à démontrer euh, le, un regard pour les autres, le soin pour les autres, en suivant les, euh, les balises euh, de santé publique uh, ici en Alberta. Et uh, je crois que ce n'est pas vraiment uh, lié à, à l'ouverture des entreprises, des commerces. Nous voyons, uh, par exemple, une, une uh, vague uh, importante des nouveaux cas au centre de l'Alberta liés aux um, uh, colonies Utter Right et avec uh, certains uh, événements uh, sociaux et religieux. Uh, deuxièmement, nous voyons uh, pas mal des événements des jeunes, les événements sociaux. Alors, uh, c'est ça qui nous, qui nous inquiète actuellement. En ce qui concerne l'ouverture des écoles, uh, 86% des parents nous ont dit dans les sondages, dans les consultations, qu'ils favorisent une réouverture des écoles en septembre. Évidemment, avec les balises sécuritaires, nous avons pris l'avis, le, 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 excusez-moi, nous avons pris le, euh, le conseil du euh, Dr. Hinshaw et de la Santé Alberta. Et, et on, on a fait évidemment les consultations avec les commissions scolaires et, et euh, pour euh, les protocoles pour ouvrir les écoles de façon sécuritaire, en point de vue de santé publique, plusieurs euh, pays euh, par, parmi au monde, euh, partout au monde, ont ouvert ou gardé ouvertes leurs écoles euh, sans euh, les problèmes en ce qui concerne santé publique parmi les élèves et les enseignants. Alors, euh, nous sommes confiants que nous pouvons le faire ici. Évidemment, il y aura les cas. Mais c'est clair, selon la preuve, que COVID-19 euh, euh, ne représente pas une menace grave aux jeunes, aux enfants. Euh, quand même, il, il faut évidemment prendre soin, et c'est la raison pour laquelle nous avons publié toutes sortes de, des balises pour le fonctionnement des écoles euh, euh, cet automne. Sorry, my French was a little rusty there today. I apologize. That concludes the Q&A. Thanks very much, everyone.